Um, great to see all of you here. I'm very happy to welcome you to the first uh, OSMOCOM conference. Um, it's been basically nine years of work on OSMOCOM projects, uh, but uh, we never had a public uh, conference uh, like this before. Um, and uh, well, as you can see, uh, quite a number of people have uh, turned up. So um, I'm very happy that uh, at least in terms of attendance, it is a success. Now we only need to deliver on uh, our promise of telling you a lot about OSMOCOM. So um, I would like to go a little bit about the audience first. Um, who is basically here? Who is attending? Uh, then there's a couple of organizational things I'd like to say in the beginning um, and uh, have uh, a very quick uh, overview about like what OSMOCOM is, where does it come from? Because maybe not everyone is on the same page here. So um, what do we have here in this room? We have OSMOCOM developers, people who actually write uh, the code and contribute to it. Um, maybe uh, if those who have uh, contributed to the OSMOCOM, uh, any of the OSMOCOM projects could raise their hand uh, for a moment. So we have some, yeah, some, some insight into that. So you can see a significant portion of people um, here attending. We have some people who operate commercial cellular networks. I think it's very few people, if maybe they could raise their hand. Okay, well, actually, okay, yeah, quite a number of people as well. We have some community wireless network operators here. Maybe they could raise their hands. Great. We have some people who do IT security research and um, use OSMOCOM stuff uh, as tools for their work. Maybe those people could also raise their hand. Yeah. Thank you. We have academia research present. Okay. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Three people all in one corner. Um, we have vendors of BTS hardware or physical layers um, also present. Um, yeah. That's some few people, <laughs> three at least, well, okay, not so bad. Um, and we have people who are doing uh, device testing. I'm not sure how many are, there are here, but uh, that's typically also in our user base. So people who use OSMOCOM or let's say the NITB to test phones or machine to machine devices or something like that. Yeah, well, okay. Yeah, so that's basically, well, Probably there's some people from other backgrounds as well, but that's sort of just to give you an idea about who is here and, and to, to give you some uh, background basically on, on where. I'd also like to uh, say some thanks well, to Heike for organization, back office and registration desk work over there. <laughs> <laughs> to Maike for ticket sales and registration. To our hosts here at Jugend Gästehaus, which probably nobody who doesn't speak German can pronounce. Um, so J J G H. <laughs> to our speakers, um, to the anonymous sponsor for the travel grants, and to the C3 VOC, the CCC Video Operation Center, for doing uh, the video recordings and even live streamings today. So anyone who cannot be here can uh, watch the talks and see the recordings afterwards. Um, that's, uh, I thought, uh, very nice of them to, to be here and to help us out with that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> while I'm saying that, we are sharing the internet uplink for the Wi-Fi with the video stream. So if all of you are doing, I don't know, Debian upgrades or something like that over the Wi-Fi link here, then the stream might uh, have some issues. So um, please uh, consider that. Yeah, okay. Also, of course, thanks to everyone who contributed code, otherwise we wouldn't be here. So, schedule, the Rust schedule, the detailed schedule you have on paper, uh, it's also online. Um, so, uh, we have uh, some talks, uh, a morning break, a lunch break, an afternoon break. We have the social event at the evening, or in the evening. If you don't know where the social event is, uh, there is a, a paper leaflet uh, at the registration desk that uh, tells you the address and how to get there. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, you can you can inform yourself. That. Well, of course, it's also on on the website. Yeah, and in between all those breaks uh, on the schedule, we have the actual schedule. So social event again here. Um, yeah. So where do we come from? 
Um, in 2008, uh, Dita and I uh, started with some old Siemens space station hardware that was available on eBay. That's basically where we're coming from. So there were some, some Siemens, uh, old Siemens BTSs available uh, with E1 interface. Um, we had to connect them using ISDN cards. There's no IP or Ethernet in those space stations. Um, and we implemented whatever was needed uh, beyond this BTS hardware uh, uh, to have a self-contained small telephony network. Um, and this initially was called, I think, BS11 ABIS, because, well, it was an ABIS implementation to talk to the BS11. And then we called it OpenBSC, which is not really a good name because it's not just a BSC. It has many other things beside, beside the BSC. And uh, we have the first uh, commit basically there um, in December 2008. So it's been quite some time. Um, and uh, we initially had this as a proof of concept just to demonstrate IMSI catchers, false base station attacks and so on. Um, and uh, we added support for more hardware over time. Already in 2009, we added support for IP access uh, nano BTSs, which means that we have created more or less unknowingly at the time the first base station controller that can operate with BTSs from multiple vendors, which uh, normally is not the case. So BSCs and BTSs have always been sourced from the same supplier um, and from the same company. Um, in 2010, we started Osmocom BB, which is where Osmo uh, appears the first time. Uh, so the etymology of Osmo. Um, uh, and uh, we called, uh, we used the name for the uh, phone side GSM stack. So we implemented the GSM stack for the telephone side uh, as part of the Osmocom BB project. And then this also created what we call the Osmocom Umbrella project, which is sort of a large, uh, by now a large project with many sub-projects. Initially, it was basically just the Osmocom BB and the OpenBSC as the only two projects, but then SimTrace and many other uh, uh, projects came along. So um, what brings us together is uh, we are all people who are enthusiastic about doing free software in uh, the, the area of cellular communications or mobile communications. Um, we did some work on Tetra, on Turaya, on DECT, on OP25, on various SDR projects, SimTrace, many others. I did the count uh, two days ago. We had 59 projects in Redmine and 112 Git repositories. Um, and I think what most people know about is mostly the RTL SDR, the OpenBSC and the Osmocom BB. But there's lots of other interesting stuff. So feel free to check that out and have a look. Um, and um, Basically, what I want to emphasize is that Osmocom is more than what we're talking about today. So today, we're talking about the cellular infrastructure projects specifically. So we're talking about GSM, GPRS, Edge, uh, and 3G um, running networks of, of these technologies using Osmocom. But there's many other projects uh, beyond uh, these uh, topics. Uh, but, uh, well, this is at the core of the interest of a lot of people. So we thought we focused the event there. Um, also, one thing, since uh, not everyone shares the, um, the history or the background in free software, um, free software is not primarily about somebody getting some software for free, but it's really about doing collaborative development. And everyone brings something into the, into the uh, project. And in the end, everyone gets all the results. So, right, you, you, there are some people who have characterized this as the cooking pot economy. So basically you're cooking something and everything, everyone brings some ingredients and in the end, everyone can eat from that pot. Well, the difference is though that in, 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 in software and in, in non-tangible goods, everyone can have the whole pot and you can copy it as many times as you want. So yeah, it's, it's uh, 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 sort of a bad analogy, but uh, this is really what this is about. And it's not about a one-way consumer producer relationship because I mean, in the end, uh, people who write software somehow uh, uh, they have to uh, earn a living as well. And uh, it only works if the complexity and the, the wide scope of the projects that we are running today only works if uh, everyone who uses it uh, and who builds commercial products and so on contributes uh, to the code. Also, one word or one slide about Sysmocom. It's a company that Holger and I uh, founded uh, in 2011. Uh, it's uh, 
exists to support the development of Osmocom. So we do some products uh, which we use and the revenue we use to, to finance, to cross-subsidize the, uh, the Osmocom development by the paid developers uh, on our payroll. Sysmocom does not claim or want any ownership of Osmocom. That's very clear. Uh, we always try to keep a very strict separation there. Um, we organize this event as a legal entity, um, but that doesn't mean that uh, we, uh, as I said, we, we don't claim ownership or anything like that. This is uh, fairly separate. Also, the trademarks, the domains, and so on are not with the company. Um, unfortunately, I have to say, Today, Sysmocom is doing more than 80% of the commits on those cellular infrastructure projects, um, which um, I say unfortunately because, well, uh, we don't want to be a single point of failure. We don't want to be the, the um, uh, how can I say, uh, yeah, if, if Sysmocom dies tomorrow, Osmocom should still live. Uh, that's basically the goal, right? It has to be sustainable um, and it uh, should not have this kind of single uh, dependency on any single entity okay well just in time at quarter past i'm very happy end of file